Okay, well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us again for one of our sustainability seminars, and welcome to everyone listening online. Uh, my name is Nancy Holm. I'm the assistant director here at ISTC and organize the seminars along with Beth Mischewski. Uh, this is our second to the last seminar for this semester. Our one uh, remaining one will be next Tuesday at noon with Dr. Alistair Boxall from the University of York in England as our speaker. Uh, he'll be discussing his research on immersion contaminants in the environment, giving us a perspective on the issue in England and Europe. Uh, in case you cannot attend our seminars in person, as many of you know, uh, we, have, we broadcast live all of our seminars on GoToWebinar, and we also record and archive them on our website. We've had a little delay uh, this spring in posting some of the recent webinars, but we hope to have those posted soon. With that, we'll begin today's seminar. I'd like to ask everyone in attendance to please silence your cell phones if you haven't done so already. And then also, um, and for those who've been here before, you know, we'll hold all the questions for the speaker till the end. And then uh, I'll come around with the microphone so we can record those for our, our archive version. And for those viewing online, you can type your questions in at any time, and then we'll answer those at the end also. So we're very pleased today to have as our guest speaker uh, Chuck Curtis, who is the supervisor of the Institutional Water Treatment Program at the Illinois State Water Survey. And the uh, Water Survey is a division of the Prairie Research Institute here on campus, as is ISTC. The Water Treatment Program was founded in 1949 and provides advice to state facilities on the purchasing, specifications, and implementation of chemical treatment for all of their water using systems. Chuck has been at the Water Survey for 30 years, working in water quality analysis first, and then he moved into the water treatment program. Chuck has his BS degree in biology from Hiram College, and he has an MS in agronomy and in education uh, from the U of I. He taught high school for a couple of years before joining the Water Survey. So with that, um, I'd like to welcome Chuck for his presentation on uh, evaluation of zero blow down cooling towers with soft water. Chuck? All over? Thank you, Nancy. I've got 85 slides, so if you have questions along the way, please ask them because it'll be difficult to uh, um, find to figure out where you are. <laughs> okay, I want to acknowledge uh, Jennifer Tapienga, uh, the lab chemist. She did a tremendous amount of this work. Jeremy and Matt, Kishor, Jennifer, Michael Dwyer from WCTI, and Pete Walker, who's the manager of the Champaign Regional Office Building. Okay, first, what is a cooling tower? The uh, cooling tower, um, or evaporative condensers, they evaporate uh, water for cooling and refrigeration uh, processes. And they provide about 8 to 15 degrees of cooling. The, where this right here, about 50% of the water in a cooling tower evaporates. And that's where the difficult in treatment and control comes in. So why do we treat a cooling tower? You want to maintain its efficiency. You want to reduce uh, maintenance, reduce operating cost. There's health and safety concerns with Legionella. And you want to prolong your equipment life. Traditional treatment, you use molybdenum as the tracer. Polytriazole is a copper corrosion inhibitor. Polyacrylate is a scale dispersant. Organophosphate is a scale inhibitor. Sulfuric acid is a scale inhibitor. And a biocide. Um, with the zero blowdown, we still need, we still need the polytriazole, but we do not need, and we will need a biocide, but nothing else. Well, and silica. Well, okay. Performance goals. Clean, 
heat exchange surfaces, and that's achieved with low hardness, low corrosion rates, and low bacteria growth. This is the one uh, area that we did not see in this project. Okay. Why soft water makeup? Soft water eliminates the hardness scale, which reduces efficiency. Scale can build up on tubes and that fractions of inches or inches, and that will uh, decrease your efficiency, decrease the heat transfer. If you've got water, makeup water coming in that has high hardness and alkalinity, you will have deposits. This is the mo one of the most severe cases I've seen. This right here is the fill for the tower that the water goes through, and obviously not much water flow is happening there. And here is the uh, uh, scale that's on the tubes, and that's uh, the scale is a great insulator. So again, you have poor heat transfer. Why zero blowdown? It reduces your water usage 25 to 30 percent, and that saves in both the water cost and the it eliminates traditional water treatment chemicals. Silica is used, which is commonly used uh, in potable water systems, and polytriazole is added as a corrosion, copper corrosion inhibitor. Zero blowdown increases conductivity, which controls algae and bacteria without chemicals. Theoretically true, but uh, I found that biocides are still needed at the cycles of concentrations that we tested. What is cycles of concentration? It refers to the number of times the solids in the makeup water increase due to evaporation. Here's my cup of water right here. If I set it on the table and after a few days uh, the volume was decreased 50%, the concentration of the minerals would double. So that concentration of minerals is what causes scale, and is that would be considered two cycles of concentration. Um, it is controlled, cycles of concentration is controlled by bleed off or blowing down the tower, and increasing the cycles of concentration reduces water and chemical usage and cost. Here's uh, traditional treatment, the sweet spot is four to six cycles of concentration because the, we're evaporating 5,000 gallons and 10,000 gallons is the um, total use, well, is the amount blown down. Total use is 15,000 gallons. That's 100% makeup at figuring 1.5 cycles of concentration. Most, when you get down to here, four to six cycles of concentration, you've saved most of the water that, you, that can be saved. And that's where traditional water treatment tries to go. But there are many towers that are operating in this 1.5 to three cycles of concentration because the water is hard and with traditional treatment you can't get uh, the higher cycles. And this, this here is just showing, again, cycles of concentration right here and gallons uh, per hour used. As you increase your cycles, you decrease the gallons used. And by the time you get to 20, you pretty much you have leveled off. Another way to look at it here, if we go uh, at 10 cycles of concentration, you save 35. You go to 25 to 200, you haven't saved any more, really, any more water. So if you're wanting water savings, once you get to 20, 20 to 25, you've saved all the water you're going to save. Okay. Zero blowdown, it eliminates tra traditional water treatment chemicals, and silica is 
a common potable water treatment and it is added at first when you're transferring from a traditional treatment program to this zero blowdown program, silica is added to prevent uh, corrosion. If this example is Chicago city water and the city water has about three milligrams per liter silica. So to get to the recommended level of 200 to 300 silica, just by cycling up, you don't get there till you're at 75 cycles of concentration. So in this range here, you would have to add additional silica to get up to the recommended levels. The uh, WCTI uh, equipment, they have high efficiency softeners, they have remote monitoring which records both the uh, water usage and the regeneration. Um, they'll install and commission the softeners and regular treatment to uh, zero blowdown treatment. Um, their high efficiency softeners uh, reduce softening waste typically 6 to 12 percent and less than 1 percent of the treated water uh, they reduce the soil requirement by 25 to 50 percent. They're high efficiency you get more softening out of them. They just use regular salt and they've got uh, alternating softeners so that you've always got soft water supplied to the tower. This is the target uh, that they want to get to. pH of 9.2 to 10. Total dissolved solids over 10,000. Hardness less than 30 in the tower. Hardness of the softener less than 0 0.5 milligrams per liter. Over 20 cycles of concentration. Bacteria, their goal is less than 1,000. Uh, colony forming units per mil. Silica. 200 to 400, that's the copper, that's the mild steel corrosion inhibitor, and tolytriazol, 10 to 20, that's the copper corrosion inhibitor. We're done with the background, now to what I actually did. We've got uh, four systems. The Champaign Regional Office Building, uh, 340 ton evaporative condenser, operates in the summer. Chicago Data Center, 2,600 tons operating year-round. Manuka Refrigeration Warehouse, they've got two systems, G1, which is 750 tons, and G2, 425, and they're offline in the winter when it's cold. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Sorry. Water analysis. Once a month, we did a full analysis on all, the, on all the samples. We did hardness chloride, silica, total dissolved solids, metals, and others. We did that for the cold distribution water, the softened water, the makeup water, which uh, in the case of Champagne ROB had the silica added to it, and the cooling tower. We also, for the cooling tower, did biological tests, which was ATP, uh, aerobic bacteria, Legionella, fungi, and we also did tolytriazol. WCTI, once a month, they tested and they did pH, TDS hardness on the city water and the softener, and the cooling tower, they did their bacteria test silica and tolytriazol. I don't expect you to be able to read this, but this is just the example of the uh, cold distribution, soft and makeup water, and just to show we tested everything, alkalinity, a bunch of metals, uh, it was, it's a full analysis. For the cooling tower, we 
again, did a full analysis, and then we figured out the cycles of concentration of each of the components. And then biological, we tested uh, chlorine. We did a total ATP, a free ATP, and a, um, the free, I'm sorry, total ATP and free, which is dead, and then calculated the living. And all the reports, it's just the living ATP that I am recording. And we got a new meter, and so we, trans, we transposed the, uh, uh, which was less sensitive, so the older data we transposed to the equivalent of the new meter. Um, we also tested for fungi. Aerobic bacteria. We tested, we took a sample and read it after two to five days and then 10 to 15 days because some bacteria takes a longer time to develop. Phygenics, um, they did their, we sent a sample in for them and they tested it after six to eight days and then WCTI, they tested their bacteria after two days. Um, Phygenics also did Legionella testing. Okay. 2014, we went with the traditional treatment that they were using, which was no treatment at all, 100% blowdown. No chemicals added, and that, that's our baseline. In 2015, we then instituted the zero blowdown soft water makeup, where we added the silica, tolytriazole, and biocide. OK. Uh, first, we'll look at 2014 Champaign Regional Office Building, 100% blowdown. Water samples were collected from July to October. It had low cycles of concentration. It had scale deposits. The mild steel corrosion rates were poor to severe. The copper corrosion rates were good to poor. It had low biological activity, but it had the only positive Legionella test. Here, this is showing the uh, conductivity and the cycles of concentration, and they follow each other as expected. But as you can see here, uh, here's three cycles of concentration. Right here, the red is cycles of concentration, conductivity, 900. Or, you know, so it's still very low. I looked at um, hardness is made up of calcium and magnesium. And if in the cycles of concentration, if everything has the same cycles of concentration, there's no scale forming. Calcium drops out of solution uh, whenever the cycles of concentration increase, especially if there's no chemicals added. Magnesium does not. So here, we're looking at, this is the cycles of concentration. So 3.1 cycles of concentration overall total, but the calcium was only 1.4 and the magnesium was 3.3. Calcium, if there was no scale dropping out, would have been 3.3. And so on through here, 1.9, 2.4, 1.2 calcium, 1.5 magnesium. So even here at 1.4 cycles of concentration, there's still some scaling occurring. And then again here, 1.5 and 2.6. Okay. Traditional corrosion coupons, you normally um, install them for 60 to 120 days. We did not have that time because as the project worked out, we were only able to install the uh, coupons in September. 
So I picked very short times because I wanted to get some data. So it was 13 days, 29 days, and 42 days. And as the most of the corrosion takes place on a coupon in its first few days. So the longer you have a corrosion coupon installed, the corrosion rate will decrease because there's not as much corrosion taking place at the end of the time. But here you see very high corrosion rates, 9.66, 6.05 at 29 days, and it is decreasing at 42 days, 4.4. This graph um, expresses that. This blue line is very poor to severe. Um, this line indicates poor corrosion rates, and you can see uh, shorter time, longer time, longer time, better corrosion rates, but the conditions are virtually the same throughout. Looking at it a different way is the frequency. Here we've got uh, poor corrosion rate, and that was the uh, 42 days. Very poor to severe was the 13 and 29 days. Copper corrosion, same kind of thing. Uh, 0 0.6 for uh, 13 days and lower rates for the increasing days. Again, a graphic representation. The copper corrosion was not as severe here. This is uh, poor and this line here is moderate to fair and here is good. So. They're not where you want them to be, but they're just the nature of the water. They're not as severe. Again, looking at this, uh, these two were good, and this one was poor. Now looking at biological activity. This is ATP, which is a general measure of biological activity. And it's relatively low, um, although this is poor and this is good. Um, again, you've got a high turnover of water, so you don't have extremely high rates. This is now looking at um, bacteria, and it's from excellent to fair, and you can see there's a, a difference here. This is uh, Phygenics. This is IS. This is uh, Illinois State Water Survey for the 10 to 15 days, and yeah, and this is two two to five days. So again, the longer period of times and more bacteria is registered. This is just adding in the ATP. And uh, which is uh, this line here is the ATP, and it kind of follows this one here. Again, low le general low levels compared to what we will see. Okay, here's the water usage. Um, however, the water the meter was not read before the tower was filled and brought online, so the total water usage of 926,000 gallons could have been a million gallons. It's, we don't know. But the uh, gallons per minute is here at the end. And here's just a, a graph showing the uh, cycles of concentration in the red line and the water usage in the blue line. Um, October 16th, so somewhere around here, we discovered that um, the there was a defective float on the cooling tower 
allowing uh, 2.2 gallons per minute or 3,168 gallons per day leak when it was offline. So that will affect things in the future. So the cost, we've got the cost of uh, um, water charge, the sewer charge, the total is $9 per thousand. And so the total cost of the water was 8,355, or if it's a million gallons, 9,000 gallons. Here we, now we're to the next year, and we're at the zero blowdown. Water samples were collected monthly, May to October, but we also collected samples daily, Monday through Friday, April 20th through October 2015. Um, the cycles of concentration ranged from 1 to 51.3. They were down by, they were at one cycle of concentration because of the leaky float. Low hardness, there was no evidence of scale. Excellent to severe mild steel corrosion rates. And the reason, I'll show you later, the reason there's severe corrosion rates is because of the leaky float. Copper, again, excellent to poor they were poor because of the leaky float. High biological activity, leaky float, low cycles of concentration and conductivity compared to what uh, was possible. So day, daily we tested the cold distribution, the primary softener, the water then went to a polishing softener, and then went to a makeup line where the silica was added and the tower water. We did hardness and conductivity on all those samples daily, pH one time a week, silica, the steel corrosion inhibitor on the polishing softener, makeup water and tower once a week, and polytriazole on the tower once a week. Here we've got cycles of concentration, 1.4 all the way up to 55 and above. And this is what we observed results with a broken float. How many days um, you were at each cycle of concentration. It never got above 55 cycles of concentration and only three days above 50. If um, the tower operated the way we expected it to, I estimated that it would look more like this. So it would cycle up and then it would stay up at this uh, high cycles of concentration. So the tower would have cycled above 20, 80, 84% of the time if the float worked. Instead, it was more like 30% of the time. Here we're looking at cycles of concentration and conductivity and they follow the same uh, pattern and you can see the, these areas above the lines are where we want to be but we weren't there very often. Just by the way right here is where the float was finally fixed where what, what, what was happening is that when the tower was offline on weekends or if there was cold water, cold weather, the float would leak about four, three to four gallons per minute. And so that's why we could never really cycle up until we got to this hot weather here. But right here, with the float operating, it's just cycling right up quickly. Softeners did an excellent job. Um, they stayed under 0 0.5 uh, milligrams per liter hardness, except for at the very first, well, in the, uh, well, in one time in August, where, but it was 0 0.52, so that's excellent. And here's an example. Here um, I'm looking at the test that 
Illinois State Water Survey did compared to WCTI. And here, um, total hardness, 88, 80 for WCTI, you got zero. Here, we're using uh, ICP that gives us those uh, exact results. And the polishing softener was 0 0.08 milligrams per liter and 0 0.224. So, excellent uh, removal of hardness. Again, here's the, uh, the targets that we looked at before. And for the tower, again, we want under 30 milligrams per liter. And yeah, at the very start, it was a little high, and that could even be because of uh, dissolved uh, calcium uh, scale, but every time after that, uh, it was below. Here we've got silica and cycles of concentration. The black line is the silica, and the red line is cycles of concentration, and they follow each other because there's 8 to 10 milligrams per liter silica in the champagne water. So uh, they're going to follow each other. Um, silica, we wanted over 200, and rarely was it over that. Here's the uh, mild steel corrosion rates, and so I'm comparing apples with apples. I kept the same kind of days, 13, 29, 12, 42, so that we could compare them to the time that uh, in 2014. And the corrosion rates range. Here's one that's uh, 9.11, extremely high. And here's a very low one, 0 0.34. Looking at this graphically, again, we see the, sh the shorter amount of time has high higher corrosion rates. If there's a longer time, you tend to have lower corrosion rates. But there is some variation. This right here is corator probe results, which uh, were done through WCTI, and they're much lower rates. Yes? Yes. I guess another question to you is this should we interpret that as this is um it, the leaky float was totally ignored and unrecognized by anybody before because they were doing 100% blowdown. They weren't trying to cycle up, so if it leaked, who cares? And, um, but it is something to look at, but I, I this seems excessive. Um, most, most towers, you're trying to cycle them up and you're, you would notice something like that. Okay, hold on to your hat. Um, this is here, this is the silica, and this is the cycles of concentration, and you can see very clearly now that you've got high corrosion rates where you don't have the silica, even though this is a longer period of time. Here, this one here, we'll see that, and this one here, the average silica may have been good here, but with this extreme drop here, it had much time at very low silica, very little protection. So uh, you've got higher corrosion rates, even though these are long time, 42 days. But you see down here, when they're in this sweet spot where the silica is where it should be, you've got low corrosion rates. This is looking at, um, here,
here we've got the triazole again. It's in, in green. This is the, uh, the measurement of it. This is the cycles of concentration. Down here in, uh, uh, is the uh, tolytriazole that in black is the tolytriazole that was added. So we were adding it along. And it, has, it does have some effect, but most of the effect. Wait a minute. Yes. OK. So we're to copper corrosion. Sorry. So tolytriazole is the only uh, thing that will prevent copper corrosion. And so the cycles of concentration do not, are not well correlated with the uh, polytriazole because it doesn't, there's no polytriazole in the makeup water like there's silica in the makeup water. Here's the corrosion rates for copper. And again, the same periods of time. Here we've got uh, 0 0.1. 0.08, but we've got some high ones too, 49. And graphically, again, looking at them, the shorter time periods have higher corrosion rates. This is looking at the, the spread. We have many very good and excellent. Here's and here's some that have uh, moderate to fair. Um, they tend to be shorter times. And uh, here's one that's poor. So again, in this case, Tali tries all parts per million. Here's the uh, 10 uh, milligram per liter uh, target. And it's only a few times that it's above that. And you've got lower corrosion rates when you've got Tali in the system. Here's a measure of ATP, total biological activity, and 25,000 is here. This is a logarithmic scale. So we've got very, very high rates. This is poor, and everything is pretty much above poor. Here we've added, uh, um, this is biocide, and it has maybe some effect, but it's really not enough to, to really control it. Here. We've got, uh, in red is the target cycles of concentration. The blue is the living ATP. Here we've got uh, the biocide added. And there, there seems to be, there may be here at this higher cycles of concentration, down here we got the lowest ATP value but it's still uh, quite high. It's not where we want it to be, but there may be some effect with the higher conductivity. Now we're looking at aerobic bacteria, and we've got um, the uh, Illinois State Water Survey, two to five days, which is here. Then the green is 10 to 15. Phygenics is this dark blue. And WCTI is two days. And again, the, the longer the duration time, the higher the values. and WCTI wants to have 1,000 or less, and they're all above that, and some way above it. Here we look at um, aerobic bacteria, 
and we look at the cycles of concentration and again there may be some slight effect but not nearly enough. And now we've got ATP anaerobic bacteria and ATP is this line here and they kind of correlate. Okay, here's the uh, water usage and because of the unregulated uh, bleed off, um, much more water was consumed than, than expected. Here is um, cycles of concentration and water usage and these spikes here are typically over the weekend when the tower was turned off. So when the tower was running it used much less water than when it was offline. And then again, and here is where the float is actually fixed and the cycles go up and the water usage goes down. So, Champaign Regional Office Building 2014-2015 water cost. We have the same, I use the same cost as we did before. So 2014, $8,355 or $9,000. Uh, total water cost, $828,000 was $7,472. Not much water savings, but we used so much more water than we expected to. I'll just briefly look at the other sites. Here's Chicago Data Center, and again, you've got cycles of concentration, you've got TVS, you've got conductivity, and they all follow the same pattern. Obviously, some difficulties here and down here where we drop below the line. Just to show that even at when systems were working the way they were supposed to, you've still got uh, poor control with the bacteria. Um, again, 100 is what WCTI wants as good. There were some that were down there, but many, again, this is 2 million. So, and this is adding the ATP onto it, which is the purple line. And again, it's, it is also showing high levels. This is the water usage. And there are a couple things that, that took place here. Um, May to October. So here we've got uh, pretty traditional water usage. November and December here. Um, low temperature, so less load. And then January and April, they had control issues, obviously, and then control issues here where the tower was overflowing, and so very high rate of water use. This is looking at Manuka G1, again, COC, TDS conductivity, same pattern. Um, here, the tower was uh, uh, emptied and then refilled here because of the cold weather. Again, bacteria. This is the uh, thousand where they want to be, and everything is above. Many are above that. This is total dissolved solids here. Cycles of concentration. Again, when you add ATP, which is the purple line here, it's showing many times high values. Here's G1 water use and uh, 2.5 million gallons. 
750 tons looking at return from investment. This is data from WCTI. Um, 2.6 million gallons of water saved, uh, which is $15,000 a year. They say the ROI is about one year on equipment, a brand new building. Here's G2 in Manuka, same pattern of uh, conductivity, TDS, cycles of concentration. Again, bacteria, if a thousand is our benchmark, many are above that. When we add in ATP, uh, the purple line, again, it has some, it has a few low values, but it also has many high. Here's the water usage for G2, 1.4 million. It's smaller, 425 tons, um, 1.4 million gallons of water saved, $8,000 uh, saved, an ROI about one year. The difference in the ROIs is the size of the softeners. Larger softener, larger system, more expensive. Okay. How do the different facilities compare to the Champaign Regional Office Building? So here, Chicago Data Center, 2,600 tons, and the typical GPM is 4.3 to 5.5, 5.6. Manuka, G1, 2.9 to 6.3, G2, 2.0 to 3.1. But here we have the Champaign Regional Office building at 340 tons, the smallest of the bunch, and its typical GPM was 3.5 to 5.1. I estimate that the water usage would re be reduced about 50% if the float was working. What are the expenses from the uh, regional office building? The high efficiency softeners were $6,000. Wireless communication, $500. Startup and chemicals, $2,000. The monthly program fee was $670 a month, so $13,000. Total water expenses in 2014 was $9,000. So the size of the tower um, at Champaign ROB is probably too small to get a quick payback time with this. The performance goals, just to review them, clean heat exchanger surfaces, which is achieved by tower hardness less than 30 and hardness in the softener 0 0.5, low corrosion rates, and low aerobic biogrowth. All those, well, all go goals were met except for the low aerobic biogrowth, under 1,000 CFU per mil. It may occur if the tower cycles of concentration was over 100, but there'd be little water savings, or if the conductivity was above 50,000. Looking at the cycles of concentration and conductivity at all the locations, these are the highest values. For Champagne, it got up to 51 cycles, 19,000 conductivity. Chicago Data Center, 107 cycles, 33,000 conductivity. G1, 55 cycles, 37,000. And G2, 51 cycles, uh, 28,000 conductivity. So these are my recommendations for this system. Use it in a tower that's operating at less than three cycles of concentration to achieve the water savings. Operate the tower above 20 cycles of concentration and 
higher cycles of concentration and conductivity depending on the water source, but add biocide to control the aerobic bacteria. Don't cycle it up to 100 or 200 cycles of concentration just to achieve the uh, biocontrol. Questions? Thank you very much, Chuck, You're for welcome. your presentation. Uh, do we have some questions at first here from the audience? I'll come around with the microphone. Just mic. Um, in the Chicago data center environment, uh, the water consumption was the highest. And in a data center, their equipment reliability is so important. So I was wondering how the cycles of concentration relate with corrosion and how that relates with you know, reliability of the equipment that's in the data center? The only uh, corrosion data that I had was the uh, corator probe results, which measured much lower than my corrosion coupons. But I assume, since I showed that the when the silica is in the proper level, um, I, it, it should have provided good corrosion protection um, at that 100 cycles of concentration. Chuck, uh, a question in terms of, uh, it, in that one of the last slides, you showed the comparison of the different facilities. And uh, they obviously had uh, different attributes. Yeah, if you want to pull that one back up, if we go back. Uh, the conductivity one, go back, I think it was, yeah, that one uh, okay. right there that you're looking at the different values for the different ones. I'm wondering is, um, and then you had different, another one where you had, uh, I think it was different flow rates and, and so forth. It, that begs the question, is there a way to develop maybe a dimensionless variable which would enable you to uh, more readily compare these different units? so that, um, again, you could kind of normalize some of the data? Um, I'm not exactly sure where you're going. To figure out ROI or to figure out, uh, I'm, I'm not sure where you're going with this. It may be a, a better way to compare the different units, kind of thinking ahead if you're going to be comparing a lot of different units, and maybe it's maybe there was one or two slides back from there, is that one you're talking about conductivity, but I thought I remember seeing one, if you keep going back, where um, you were trying to compare, yeah, that's the one there, where you're okay. talking about, you know, different uh, GPM, different tonnage, um, maybe, and I'm just throwing out that the concept is, is there a way to kind of do some type of a normalization maybe some type of dimensionless unit so that uh, kind of the next water tower that you would look at, you could be able to take that data and, you know, kind of compare it with the data that you're looking at there. Um, yeah, I don't know. The WCTI has uh, a program that where you can plug in all the information of what the present operation is and then the expected operation with um, with their system and they f can then figure out the ROI that's all uh, figured out. But yeah, it, I thought it was quite dramatic that here, this is the largest, now th this is the cooling tower, all these are evaporative condensers and I don't know what effect that has on water usage. Um, but here certainly, this is operating very efficiently, 2,600 tons and it's very close to the amount of water usage with the float that didn't work to the Champaign Regional Office building. And then in between just showing, you know, there is a relationship between water usage and tons where there's a, de these, these are virtually I, very similar units, just different sizes. And here 750 tons, uh, three to six GPM, here's two to three. Uh, just to add something, this might be a loading question too, because those are, that's the nominal system size. And, I mean, 
there might be variations in actual. Right, data. right. Sorry, moving on. Um, I wanted to ask, do they recommend, does the system manufacturer recommend filtration, and do you think that that would have an effect on the biological loading? Uh, probably would. They, they do recommend filtration. Um, I recommend filtration. Do I ever see it? Hardly ever. Um, I was just going to follow up with Kevin's question. Um, typically what I would expect is we'd be able to compare by cooling degree days or something, but because we're comparing um, you know, a data center which is trying to remove heat from an operation with refrigeration right. and, and ambient cooling, um, it is a little bit more difficult to come up with a metric. But if you're comparing across, um, you know, just ambient cooling for comfort cooling, you would be able to do the cooling degree days um, metric to levelize them. Um, it, it may be good to make note that, you know, for like the Manuka facility operations, um, you know, you're cooling to refrigeration temperatures. Right. And so you're cooling down to four degrees Celsius with less water than a small office building was cooling to like 70, um, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, obviously. But um, so you're you're achieving significantly more cooling at the Manuka facilities. Right. I'm also interested in units of measure in different industries and. Um, if I recall, tons in terms of uh, chillers is like tons of ice. Equipment. Yes, yes. Is it per day, per week? It's not required for amount of ice. That's per hour, per hour. That's right. Just that long. There's no time. Interesting. But uh, my main question is, um, I have not heard cycles of concentration before, and my question is, um, why do you think, one, is that a common unit in this industry? Yes. And so why do you think, um, why is that useful as opposed to just tracking, say, concentration of uh, calcium carbonate or total solids or whatever grammar you're interested in? Um, does that, that seem a little more straightforward? Okay. The, um... Do you, do you remember uh, way back when, when I was showing the magnesium and the calcium cycles of concentration and how the calcium was less than the magnesium? If you just looked at the milligrams per liter, you couldn't really tell anything. But in a perfect world, if we take water and cycle it up 10 times, everything that is in the incoming water will be 10 times higher in the cooling tower. Without treatment, your hardness, which is calcium and magnesium, the magnesium would be 10 times higher, but the calcium might be 7 times higher or 6 times higher because that other 3 or 4 parts is dropping out of scale and coating your surfaces. There are other questions here. I'm <laughs> uh, 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 used, uh, used any kind of corrosion anodes on cooling towers. Do you know if they experience corrosion on I have not. I I don't. I have one more question. Can they make a beat the uh, filling tower of PVC or other you know, like, uh, recycled plastics? Yeah, there are plastic uh, towers. There's different materials. Some have stainless steel basins. Um, and polymer construction over the metal. Like the metal yes. Yeah. Other questions here? We've still got the, si the rest of the system water, the, the pipes and the chiller and everything else that Okay, I see we have no other questions here and none online, so I want to again uh, thank Chuck for his presentation today and then remind people about our seminar next Tuesday at noon. Thank you.
Welcome.